Hello everyone. Powerful devices meet unmet needs. So what makes a powerful book scanner? With that in mind, the Solaris One was built. It scans 4 inches wider than A3 as most book scanners don't scan quite big enough. Most of them are also heavy and bulky but this is made completely the opposite. Overhead scans have shadows and lack sharpness but a flash LED and 48 megapixels got them fixed. It uses USB 3 even though many others do not because it allows usage anywhere without power adapters or outlets and fast transfer of high quality images with no compression. As you can see, it attaches to the scanning pad so you don't have a hefty base to carry around or struggle to put one into a bag or drawer. Now, soft scanning mats are common but they roll into bulky cylinders and then walk indefinitely. A pad like this stays flat, easily slides into bags and stored. I won't be dwelling in familiar stuff such as software features but instead focus on the unmet needs. Now overhead scanning brought about two big advantages. Pages are scanned facing up, greatly simplifying book scanning and scanners can be made compact despite having large scanning areas. But it introduced other creeping problems like poor scan quality caused by ambient light, blurry scans due to lack of resolution and motion, and page unevenness giving distorted scans. This encyclopedia measures 9 by 11 inches, having more than 1,000 tightly bound semi glossy pages with prints near its gutter and loaded with tiny equations and footnotes. All those attributes pose grave challenges to overhead scanning and I shall focus on how each of them is tackled. With automatic scan enabled, it will capture once it sees ready and complete pages in its view. The Solaris one is equipped with the flash capture system whereby a short burst of ultra bright light is emitted during scan. At more than 13,000 lumens, it is more than 10 times brighter than typical room lighting, but it is hardly noticeable by the human eye because it is turned on for less than 1,000th of a second. Other than drowning out ambient shadows and coloration that befalls a page, it also serves to freeze motion like uh, subtle page fluttering and movements due to unstable fingers or vibrations from nearby devices such as ventilation fans on a computer. Equations like these often appear blurry after zooming in mostly due to unintended motion or lack of resolution. As you can see, flash capture and the 48 megapixel sensor alleviated the problem. On the other hand, lines, annotations and footnotes on diagrams can be rather finely printed and appear faded, blurry or become invisible altogether. Let's uh, let's zoom in on some of them. The straightness of the sentences and paragraphs is the result of multi-dimensional page flattening, whereby not only their lateral curvatures are taken into account, but also other anomalies like page twisting and indentations. While scanning, I recall seeing equations with finer prints like uh, sub and superscripts. Here are some of them. 
Now, an even greater challenge would be to scan Chinese or Japanese characters. They contain many more strokes than the usual alphanumeric character set, therefore demanding not just high-resolution sensors, but also selected lenses. Uh, automatic capture was left turned on, I need to zoom in more to show each character clearly. Note that each of them measures just 3 by 3 millimeters. But even so, one could easily contain 10 to 20 strokes. I was an avid photographer until the hobby became somewhat too expensive for me. Well, most photographers know the pro and cons of using a flash. It illuminates the subject when ambient light is lacking. But too strong of a flash tends to drown out the natural lighting in a shot, removing shades and nuances and darkening its background. But I realized that it is actually advantageous when capturing certain objects like documents because we do not want those inaccuracies brought about by ambient light. That gave me a Eureka moment in 2013 when the idea of making a book scanner came about what we have here is a magazine with semi-glossy pages. Not only they are prone to shadows and coloration, but they also produce a strong glare at certain angles, like these two bright patches which appear clearly in the preview video. I shall now scan these pages. Focus on the left one while I switch to the captured raw image. And now the right one. This is after page separation and flattening. Zooming in. What happened was that during the capture, a split-second burst of flash illuminated the pages and drowned out the reflections, effectively diluting them. So, to recap, what we have done is create a slimmer and lighter large format scanner that makes it much easier for users to carry, store and use wherever they want. Due to elimination of residual attributes of page unevenness and contaminants caused by ambient light, pages now look more like they are captured by flatbed scanners than cameras. We hope that these innovations will help sections of the scanning community who have been searching for solutions to the many issues that they had been struggling with for so long. And we thank you for your support and feedback throughout these years.